Welcome back to another little bit of Lisp. This time we're going to look at something which caught me out the first time I saw it, and so it's a rather interesting one. Um, you can see here we're calling position if a couple of different ways, and we're getting the correct result each time. But it's slightly surprising because position if is going to take a function, and it's going to run that function on each of the elements um, of this list until it finds some it finds one for which odd p returns true. This predicate returns true. So it's going to go through, bum, bum, dum, 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 and this one is going to be the one, the first one that's odd, and so it returns its position in the list, in this case, 4. Now, given that it requires a predicate, and a predicate is a function, how the hell are we able to pass a symbol in? Because a symbol isn't a function. You can't run some code on a symbol and it just work. So what's going on here? Of course, if we want the answers, we should jump to the spec, and so I'm going to bring it up here. We can see position and position if, that's the one we're interested in. So you see the first argument it takes is that predicate that we were talking about. Let's go and look at predicate down here. Predicate is a designator for a function. Designator for a function, a function designator. And so a designator is an object that denotes another object. Okay, so let's see what a function designator is specifically. We'll go to the glossary and we'll go to f for function. And we'll scroll down here until we find function designator. This is going to get a little heavy, but we will break it down. Function designator, noun. A designator for a function. That is, an object that denotes a function, and that's either, or is one of, sorry, a symbol denoting the function named by that symbol in the global environment, or a function denoting itself. Right. Okay. So it's either, it's something that represents a function. It can either be the function itself, in which case it is itself, so it automatically kind of denotes itself. Like, I am Chris, so I represent Chris as well. You know, like, if you're looking for me, I'm me. But I also have a name which you can refer to me by. And that's the kind of symbol case here. A function designator can also be a symbol. And let's see what the terminology was again. It says, a symbol denoting the function named by that symbol, so the function with that name, in the global environment. So it's one that um, was a top-level defined function. So not some lambda, not something else just floating around in memory. This is one of these top level functions. Um, but yeah, so this is the thing. It's a function in the global environment. And um, we can use either of these. Now, why would you use one over the other? Well, of course, this is going to be faster because this is the function. So, and it's not something that just kind of names the function. In this case, it's going to have to go and look up and find that function before it can do its work. Um, so this is going to be a little slower. But there are cases where it might be useful. More likely even than that, though, is that at some point you're going to see this in code and it's going to be a bit of a kind of surprise. And now at least we've seen it and addressed what that is. So thanks for stopping by and I'll see you in another little bit of Lisp.